Okay, so lesson 84. This is a, a review section. Um, uh, these are the ideas for today's review. <clears throat> uh, review of 67, love created me like itself. I am in the likeness of my creator. I cannot suffer. I cannot experience loss. And I cannot die. I am not a body. I would recognize my reality today. I will worship no idols, nor raise my own self-concept to replace myself. I am in the likeness of my creator. Love created me like itself. Uh, you, okay, so I'll talk a little bit on that. So isn't that so beautiful? Mm. So what am I? So I am in the likeness of my creator. So what is, my, what is the likeness of my creator? Well, it's sort of telling me what the, the creator is not. So I cannot be... So whatever it is that I am can never experience suffering. So if I'm, if I'm identifying with something that can, can experience suffering, it's not me. I, you know, I'm, I'm identifying with, with a false self. And therefore I'm disconnected from the creator or my oneness with the creator. I cannot experience loss. I cannot die. So, which is, you know, which, which gets to the crux of things. Am I experiencing myself as, as an association with something which is in the realm of that which passes? You know, well, does the body eventually pass and die and suffer? It seems, to, yes. What about, uh, what about, um, uh, cannot experience loss. What about thoughts? Well, thoughts, you know, it cannot be a thought because it's just a transitory, transitory thing. What are, am I an image or past memories or associations? Well, those seem to be passing as well, so I can't be those things. The body, I'm not a body. So to be the likeness of my creator, to experience oneness with my creator, it's got nothing to do with what the body is. So... So, so I would recognize my reality today. I love this word in the course, recognition. I need to recognize what I am. And the only way I can recognize what I am is to stop identifying with what I'm not. You know? And what this course is telling me is that it's trying to tell everyone that, hey, are you identifying with your body? Are you identifying with the human experience of thoughts, images, memories? Are you identifying, identifying and in fear because you experience yourself as something fragile that's about to die or diable? Then if you are doing those things, then by definition you cannot recognize your likeness with, with the Creator because you're identifying with that which is passing in the realm of the limited or in the realm of that which ages and that which dies. So if you, one way to look at it is if, if you drop your identification with thoughts, with body, with time, with this and that, with images. So drop, drop your identification and then recognize what's left. And if you recognize what's left, is that recognition of what's left, can that die? Can that suffer? Is it subject to time? Can, you know, so are you recognizing something? If you drop the body, drop your thoughts, drop everything, drop time, tracking time. So what, what is recognized now? Is that recognition limited? Is it diable? And if it is, then if you drop that, is what's left? Is it in time? Can it die? Can it suffer? What, what is the recognition after you've dropped all identifications with that? From the realm of passing. So that, so I, I really like that. You see, it says, "I am not the body." Well, if I'm not the body, I'm not the thoughts. I'm not time. I'm not an image. I'm not a picture. Then what am I? What what is left to recognize? I guess if it's not diable, then it must be eternal. Beyond time, beyond death, beyond all suffering, beyond all passing. Okay, so um, you might find these specific forms helpful in applying the ideas. Let, let me not see an illusion of myself in this. I like this one. 
Let me not see. So these are all like lessons you could use throughout the day. Let me, let me not see an illusion of myself in this body. Let me not see an illusion. If I see myself as the body, I'm just seeing a, looking at an illusion and thinking it's me. So it's just an illusion. Why am I, why am I associating myself with a, with a temporary transitory illusion? If I, um, if I see thoughts and say, I am my thoughts, then again, I'm seeing, let me not see an illusion of myself in these thoughts which are passing by. These thoughts are not me. They're just, you know, they're, they are of illusions. If I'm sensing time and seconds going by, then again, I'm associating with an illusion. So I like that lesson. Another one is, as I look on this, let me remember my creator. Well, I guess, you know, I would have used slightly different languaging, but as I look on this, I would have said, like, let me disidentify and be one with my creator. But anyway, who am I to argue with, of course? As I look on this, uh, let me remember. So as I look on this, if I look on something, let me use that to, to release it, to let go of it so that uh, I can again recognize my essence with being one with the Creator. My Creator did not create this as I see it. My, uh, my interpretation of that, my Creator did not create this as I see it. Well, if, if you know, even if we use like Muji's language, if there's an eye, see, if there's a small eye, the ego eye is seeing something, then uh, my Creator did not create this as I see it then it, you're basically seeing a world in terms of the Course in Miracles of fear and separation. When the little eye, the ego eye, the limited eye, sees anything, it's seeing perception. And the perception it sees, depending on the, the amount of identification within the ego, will create different types of worlds of uh, fear and separation. The more the little eye is engaged with thoughts and processing, the greater this, this virtual world, or illusory world, of fear and separation starts to exist. And that's what it sees. It does not see the world as if it was in oneness, or the, or the witnessing, the limitless witnessing of the world. It's in the limited frame. So the next lesson it, it goes through is Lesson 68. <clears throat> Love holds no grievances. Grievances are completely alien to love. Grievances attack love and keep its light obscure. If I hold grievances, I am attacking love, and therefore attacking myself. I really liked uh, this bit. If I hold grievances, I am attacking love, and therefore attacking myself with a capital S. Uh, ca self with capital S is the infinite, eternal, isness, beingness, or oneness, however you want to frame it. So, only the, only the, the limited eye, the ego eye, can hold a grievance, because it's in separation, and um, if something is in separation, then it's capable of being angry with other things it perceives in separation, because it's already within the illusion that I'm a separate me, and therefore it can see separate others behaving in ways which the separate eye wouldn't want those other separate others. But all of that is within the realm of, of the uh, illusory separation, which doesn't really exist in truth. And that's just a shift in perception to realize the oneness or, or the interconnectedness of all. So it's just, and it's experienced at a certain level that there's just one self here. There isn't like a bunch of, uh, a room full of separate selves at a certain point, there's the recognition there's just the one self. So, if hol holding, holding grievances is, a, is an attack on love, well, I mean, you know, resentment, anger is not love. I mean, it's pretty clear. And the, the love of the Creator is universal love, or the, the love which has no separation. So my love thus becomes alien to me. My self thus becomes alien to me. Yes, so the presence of God thus becomes alien to me. I am determined not to attack myself, with a capital S today. So you could say I'm a term, uh, determined not to um, attack God, God's oneness, 
uh, the the universality, the the state of limitless love. I'm determined not to attack that today, so that I can remember who I am. Yeah, I remember who I am. So who am I? You know, again, you know, so that this lesson is helping me to determine: Am I the limited I, the ego I, the the, the body mind? association, or am I that which is the eternal I, the limitless I? So these specific forms for applying this idea would be helpful. This is no justification for denying myself. So the, the way I sort of see that is the, <coughs> the ego. Like for example, if the ego is in a busy job or something, just because it's seeing things which it doesn't like, it's still no justification for abandoning the peace, the eternal peace and stillness. Um, so, it's good to see. So, whenever the e whenever the ego eye, especially if it's in a stressful environment, is starting to associate and, and connect with things, but then it's no justification for attaching and hooking into those things and losing that sense of peace, eternal peace and presence. Uh, I will not use this to attack love. So if the boss comes up and says, I want this done by 8 o'clock, or stay late and get it finished, there's still, I will not use this to attack that infinite peace and love within. Let me not tempt, let this not tempt me to attack myself. So, if I see like a, an angry boss or a rejection or whatever it is, or a colleague, let me not, let this not tempt me to attack myself, because if I attack, if I hold anger or attack, then it's, it's just my one self I'm attacking. So I'm only attacking me if I get angry at somebody else. So it's not, let, me not use, no, let me not use it as a temptation. <clears throat> so all of these things are just, in, in a way I would say, it's basically saying just don't hook into the world. Don't, you, you know, you have your, your eternal peace, your eternal stillness, the eternal sense of oneness and isness. And the course is just giving different variants, like do not hook into colleagues, do not hook into bosses, do not work into schedules, do not hook into attachments and outcomes of, of getting a job or whatever it is. You know, um, like um, I think it's either Jesus or St. Francis said, wear the world like a loose garment. Um, do not hook into, wear the, world, wear the world like a loose garment. You know, let, let everything, f mm. and Muji says something like, mm. you know, it's just like, one of my favourite metaphors he, he did was, um, you know, treat the world like you're going through Brixton Market <laughs> and you've got diarrhoea. You know? <laughs> and so people try and, try and grab you and say, like, let's have a cup of tea. You go, sorry, I just have to move on, a bit of a rush right now. <laughs> and, oh and so you don't. Don't hook into the temptations in the market, you see. Don't get hooked yeah. in. And start, from experience. <laughs> and start to get yeah. start to get personal. <laughs> start to get personal with the world and get hooked into how you know all the temptations in the world. When so, he says that then, is he saying to don't engage in the conversation? And no, he's not, he's not he's not he's talking more on a me metaphorical oh. level. You know, the temptations yeah, will that, temptations in the world will try and get your ego hooked in to something juicy, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's also, um, if I can, can Yeah, I yeah, you can speak. Yeah, we're recording. When you say yeah. that, it, I, it's something like the desire for truth needs to become absolutely paramount, just like when you need to go to the toilet. In other words, the desire to keep going towards the truth and let go of all the distractions. Yeah, I understand.